Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about end of life technology. Why is that important? Well, most people when it comes to technology in our current digital age have a appliance mentality when it comes to their tech. A lot of you are probably thinking that when you buy a new computer or device that it's gonna last forever. Now, some devices like printers do last as long as the printer lasts. Most printers for Windows and Macintosh and smartphones will last as long as the printer is, work, is working as, as long as their drivers for the printer and as long as you can get it working with your current OS or phone. LaserJet printers probably have the longest life. Ones that are from the 90s won't work because we've gone from the old parallel port adapter to USB and Wi-Fi. But it, chances are, if you've got a printer that's anywhere from five years or older, it's going to work with any device that you have. And printers, especially laser printers, are made a different way because the printer manufacturers make money off of toner and ink as opposed to printers themselves. Now with computers, used to be you could keep one as long as it came on, but with software updates and cybersecurity, most of your devices are or need to be upgraded at some point. Now there's one other exception as far as programs that last long, and then we'll move on to software and hardware that doesn't last long, and a resource you can go to to check your compatibility and end of life status. But let's talk about Microsoft Office. You believe Office can last for a long time? Well, it can if you're a Windows user. Believe it or not, the oldest computer that I've seen run Microsoft Office is one that uh, was running Office 97. It was a Windows 10 computer and it is installed and it works just fine. Now, obviously, if you're sharing documents across the company network or with other people, that would be a problem. But if you're an individual home user, you can use Office for a long time. So keep in mind, if you're upgrading a computer and you still have your Office CDs and access to a CD player, it's a good chance that you could install Microsoft Office 2000, 2003, 2007, 2010, and of course, as we move forward, you can install some of the newer versions of Office obviously including Office 365, but you don't have to get 365 for your device if you're buying a new device, a Windows device. Now, if you're on the Macintosh end, it's a different story as Mac software and Mac OSs require you to use the latest version of Microsoft Office. So keep that in mind when you're looking at upgraded abilities. But next on our list of stuff that is reaching into life is your probably your Mac OS. So Mac OS <laughs> is currently at Sonoma, but Sequoia is coming out and Mac only goes back three. So I think if you're using Ventura, Sonoma, and Sequoia, you're not at end of life for your Mac. But the best way to keep track if your Mac is beyond out of date is to look at the year. If you're using a Mac that is 2018 or newer, then your Mac Intosh product, meaning your I, iMac, your MacBook, MacBook Mini. Why did I say MacBook Mini? It's an iPad Mini. But anyway, your MacBook Air is what I was thinking of, and your MacBook Pro are still supported. If you have anything older than that, then it's a good possibility that it's out of end of life. Now, keep in mind end of life doesn't mean that your device doesn't work. It just means that it's not supported by the company who made your device. And if you get new peripherals and new software, it's a good, good 
uh, chance that it won't work with your old outdated computer. So keep that in mind. Next on our list is Windows devices. Now there may be many of you that are using Windows 7 or even Windows 8, but currently right now the only two supported programs are Windows 10 and Windows 11. And with Windows 10 ending life or has an end of life of October of 2025, so the days are shortening, so it would be in your best interest to go ahead, if you've got a Windows computer and it can be updated, update it to Windows 11. If you have a computer that can only go as far as Windows 10, and that's a lot of you, and it can't go to 11, then it's time to get a new computer. No need to really repair it, just get a new computer and move forward. Reason being is because some Windows 10s, 10, not 10s, 10 computers are probably 10 to 12 years old because Microsoft, when it came to upgrading to Windows 10, said that if your computer could run 7, it could run 10. And many people upgraded. And now it's time to upgrade again. So if you're using 10, can't go to 11, time to get rid of that computer. Now another device that will surprise a lot of you as far as reaching end of life are your internet modems. Internet modems are only as good for three to five years. Think about it. When you're on the internet, that modem of yours is working 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. Technology changes with internet as far as speeds are concerned. So it's in your best interest. Every three to five years, upgrade that modem. And one of the best practices, not to be cheap, because when it comes to technology, you really can't cheap technology rent your modem and router from your internet provider. Why? Well, when it's time to get a new router, then you can just go to your internet provider or ISP and get another one free of charge. Many times they will let you know when the end of life has reached your modem and when it's time to switch. So rent it. Also, there's the compatibility option your internet router from your provider is going to be more compatible with your internet service from your provider so rent it from your provider and then finally with the cost of modems and routers now with upwards to three hundred dollars it's worth it to just get it from your isp but three to five years people when it comes to your routers to ensure that you have robust Wi-Fi and to make sure that you're getting the best possible speeds from your internet provider. Something else that you need to consider is your web browsers. Internet browsers need to be updated from time to time. and That's not even the whole list that you're seeing on the screen. Let's not forget about Brave and some of the other browsers. Now keep in mind that most in most cases your browser will update itself automatically, especially Google Chrome. But it's a good idea to go to help and settings in your browser to verify that you have the latest version. Now, if you are a Safari or Macintosh user, keep in mind that with your Safari browser, if you can't update the operating system on your Mac, you cannot update Safari on your Mac. So if you're one of those old holdouts, and want to keep your Mac until it doesn't turn on anymore, then you would have to upgrade your browser to either Firefox, Chrome, or Brave, or even Opera. But those that are having surfing issues on an older Mac, it's probably because of Safari. So keep that in mind that, you know, you gotta keep that browser up to date. Now there's a resource that I'm going to bring up that will help you check out the end of date on a lot of the items that you use. And there's a website called endofdate dot, or endoflife.date. And there's the URL there on the screen. And as you can see from the website, end of life and support information is very hard to track and awfully very badly presented. So what end of life does is that it will have a list of items either by alphabetical order on software or hardware or you can just go by the current popular pages like devices, databases, operating systems, 
desktop applications, etc., etc., and find out if there's end of life. So, for example, let's take a look at Mac OS on end of life website. So it'll tell you Sonoma, Ventura, and Monterey are sir, are currently supported by Apple. As you can see, there's the latest end of life or the latest information on it when it was released. But as you can see, if you're a Big Sur user, then you aren't supported anymore. And it tells you when the end of life supported for that device. You can also go further back if you're like, well, golly, I don't recognize any of these and I want to go back to see what I have. I'll go back to Mavericks, which ended seven years ago. So that gives you a good idea of what's supported with Mac OS and what's not supported. Same thing with desktop applications. You can look at your version of Internet Explorer or Firefox. So Firefox, as you can see, there was a release one week ago as of this video. Same thing with Internet Explorer. As you can see, Internet Explorer end of life ended two years ago. So this really gives you an idea of whatever device that you're using, hardware or software, how to find out if it's got end of life. Another example would be an Amazon Kindle. So if you go to Amazon's website and look at the Kindle, then it lets you know which ones are supported and which ones aren't supported. Same thing with Android OS. There's the versions of Android OS, which support it, what's not supported. So this website gives you a great idea of being able to look, see what's supported, and to find out if you need to really replace your device. Now again, end of life does not mean that your device won't work. It means that you won't get support, whereas installing new software, hardware, or updates and it also means that your device is prone to cyber attacks not that someone can hack into your device but if you were to click on a link or if you were needing an update for um, cyber virus i don't know why it said that well anyway a virus if you've got an older device you're not going to get support for it so keep that in mind when it comes to end of life for all of your devices. So with that said, if you've got comments or questions about devices that may be end of life, leave them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear from you to help you out as far as what you should do with your end of life device. With every video, I always ask, be sure to like, comment, and share this video because I know that you probably know somebody out there that is struggling with technology. My goal with every video is to make sure that you are experiencing new ideas and experiences with the technology you use at home and at work. I love technology and I've read all the manuals and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile. And thanks for watching.